Hello out there. Hello. Can ever, anybody hear us? Oh, are we live now? We're live now. Oh, that's exciting. Surprise. We're live. Oh, hey. It is now 2.02. We're going to give this a few minutes just to make sure everything's working. All right. Everyone can hear us. So Nice. Um, it's a Devin, it's a snowy day here in Pennsylvania. How's everything in the UK, weather-wise? Uh, gray and rainy. Who's surprised? So, just like normal, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a normal day. Have you had a normal sunny day, day since you moved to the UK? Oh, yeah. There have been a couple. And they've been really great. Like, this place is actually really beautiful, but we, you wouldn't know, like, 90% of the days. Okay. Like, 10% okay. of the days, it's gorgeous. Most of the time, it's, like, damp and gross. Yeah. All right. Ryan, how are you doing? Uh, well, I wish I could say I was actually snowed in, but as you know, Alan, it's real. It's it's snowing, but it's not like bad yet. So yeah, I'm just waiting for it to. I just wish. Is it, it supposed to get bad? I wish. Maybe like Why? a total of maybe like eight inches. I think in the next 24 hours at the most. I haven't. I, I haven't had a real snowfall in like four to five years. And, like, I remember hating it. That's because you moved to L.A. Like, that's not... It's true. (laughs) It was great. In L.A. right now, it's, like, 80 and sunny and everyone's loving life. And full of COVID. So... (laughs) (laughs) You know, that whole thing. All right. It is now 2.03. Let's get started with this. Like, let's let's get this show on the road. Hey, everybody. Welcome to... We watch this, uh, a spinoff of You Have to Watch This Podcast, where we're just going to talk about some stuff we watched this month, uh, talk some pop culture news. And stuff we're looking forward to in the future. So I'm I'm Alan. And I'm Ryan. Yeah, I'm Devin. And uh, bear with us. This is a new format for us. So we're <laughs> new new show format. Not we did the Twitch thing once, so now we're pros. Um, Basically. But yeah, we're gonna give this show on the road and start talking about some stuff. Um, I just realized you cannot see the chat at all in in uh in the stream so that sucks i thought it oh no better. let me see if i can fix that quick i want to hear what chad has to say well i mean you know like like we said we're we, we got one show under our belt so we're pros yeah. so you know let, me, let, me, know, let me see if i can fix aren't... this oh okay i know what the problem is hold on uh there we go <laughs> now now we can see it Oh, that's awesome. All right. All right. So let's get this show on the road by talking about some stuff that we watched this month. Uh, January is about the time that shows come back on with new seasons or networks will premiere new new shows. So I've actually got two new shows to talk about today. Uh, First being Resident Alien with Alan Tudyk on sci-fi. Have you guys heard of this show at all? I have, and it hasn't been good things, but I will watch anything with Alan Tudyk in it. He makes this show fun to watch. Uh, Ryan, how about you? Um, I actually came across a trailer for this on YouTube randomly a couple nights ago, and I thought it was extremely interesting. But at the same time, I completely forgot about it until I saw uh, until I saw that it was your selection to talk about today. So if that gives you any <laughs> okay. idea of what I thought about it, but I mean, it, I mean, if you're bringing it up, then it makes me interested, just to say the least. Yeah. Um. So this show, Alan Tudyk plays an alien who crash lands on Earth and is assumes the identity of a doctor, and he lives in like a little town in Colorado, kind of like outside of the, the, where I would guess the shining took place, like outside the overlook, like that little town there. It's a town like that. Um, and he gets like the, the one town doctor dies. So everyone in town is like, well, you're a doctor, uh, be our doctor now. And so it's him trying to hide his identity as an alien and, um, hijinks ensue. There's like one kid in town who can see that he's an alien. It's really weird. But what makes the show great is just Alan Tudyk's facial expressions throughout the show. Like just his reactions as a fish out of water. It's K2SO-esque, but with like actual emotion. (laughs) Okay. I mean, I don't know. 
I love Alan Tudyk, and I would definitely watch the show. But like, is that how doctors are picked? No. Like, is that like a believable? Like, are people just like you're a doctor? You're our doctor now. It's a small like, enough town that they have no other choice because they're snowed in for the winter. Oh, okay. So, so like they have to be in that situation. He's the only doctor left. Yes. So you watched it? I watched it. Yes. I've seen bad reviews. Okay. Um, and wh- wh- I don't know what the reviews are like pointing to. I just heard like, you know, Alan Tudyk was the only good thing. The rest of the show isn't great. Do you understand why people don't like it? Like, do you like this? Would you watch it again? I'm going to watch it again. He's definitely the best part of the show. The rest of it. Mm-hmm. It's always hard to judge a show by its pilot. Because you don't know what the show is going to grow in to be. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of first seasons of shows are rough. Like, for example, The Office. That's always... People Mm -hmm. always say, if you don't worry about the first season, just start with season two. Same with Parks and Rec. Uh, It takes a little bit for some shows to find their footing. I feel like Alan Tudyk is good enough in this that I will keep watching just for him. Because his comedic chops are phenomenal. Um... So, I mean, I get that. I I, I can understand why it has bad reviews and sci-fi kind of has been holding on to this for a while because back when Peacock launched, they had a commercial for it in that 30 Rock special that they did. Oh, Um, yeah. So there was a commercial for it there, but they never had a release date. So they've been kind of sitting on this for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. So I enjoy it. It's on the NBC app in sci-fi if you can find it. I don't think it's on Peacock yet but it will be i i don't know how peacock works exactly with it when it comes to new stuff uh, i'll have to ask my Weird. wife about it because she loves peacock um but, she's the only person i've ever met by the way that that likes that app yeah um <laughs> I'd, I'd watch it look i would watch that show i'm trying to keep up with the chat and they're just making fun of my wife for liking peacock so much um, but anyway, I brought up thir- I brought up the Thirty Rock Peacock special before, and now I'm going to talk about a, sh- a show from the creators of Thirty Rock, uh, Mr. Mayor, starring Ted Danson, Bobby Moynihan, and Holly Hunter. Um, this show is a few episodes in, but I've only seen the pilot. Um, not because I didn't want to watch it, just because of time. I kind of forgot that I wanted to talk about it for this. I was like, oh hey, let's watch Mr. Mayor because I want to talk about it today. Um, so this is a political comedy with Ted dancing, playing the mayor of Los Angeles in a post COVID world. Like COVID's kind of not a thing anymore. They make reference to it a few times. Like, I feel like they went back and added jokes about COVID because you kind of have to at this point. Mm. Um, but this is from Tina Fey and Robert Carlock who wrote and produced 30 rock. This was originally Mm. supposed to be a 30 rock spinoff with, uh, Alec Baldwin's Jack Donaghy. But I guess Alec Baldwin was tired of playing a political figure because I think he'd played one on SNL there for a bit. Oh, uh, weird. Yeah. Mm, but doesn't sound like something you would have done. Is, this, is, this is political light. Like, it's not super political, but it's like little tiny issues. It's more of a comedy than anything. It doesn't matter if you're <laughs> left or right. Like, this, this is very middle of the aisle and it doesn't offend anyone. Um, but the... Just kind of like Resident Alien, the best part of this show is Bobby Moynihan because he kind of plays the really? frumpy uh, communications director who doesn't really know what's going on around him and everyone makes fun of mm-hmm. him behind his back. But like Ted Danson takes a liking to him right away. Um, Bobby Moynihan in anything is fantastic, um, but he steals the show. And that's kind of hard to do when you're acting with Ted Danson and Holly Hunter. But I think every time I see really? Holly Hunter on screen, I just picture Miss Incredible. So, or like Elastigirl. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I would have thought Ted Danson would have, because this is the thing I think he does right after, um, oh, was it The Good Place? Yeah. And he was phenomenal in that. And that made me want to watch this show. Oh, he's still good in this, but I still think mm-hmm. Bobby Moynihan steals it. So. Oh. Uh, Ryan, have you heard of the show at all? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the people and and to be honest the people you're talking about is outside of my like entertainment spectrum okay so mm-hmm. i i mean it's like but it, let me let me bring like... it let me bring it into yeah. your entertainment <laughs> spectrum ted danson played sam alone on cheers okay gotcha bobby moynihan yes. was on snl okay um and holly hunter was elastigirl okay so but 
by the, this sounds like a smaller watered down version of Veep. Kinda. Oh, okay. But but you can't you can't say the f bomb on this show because it's on well, NBC. I mean, obviously, yeah, no. It, so, it's yeah, a, I mean, it sounds good. It's a good. It, it seems like it's going to be a mix between Veep and um, Veep and Thirty Rock. Uh, do I think Peak Six One Four would like Thirty Rock? I think I think he would. I think anyone who watches Thirty Rock will like Thirty Rock, even if you don't like the behind the scenes aspect of tv shows i think he would like that well i mean it's clever writing and they have enough like funny references to like itself and to like things that are going on that like i i appreciate it even though like i don't really care what happens behind the scenes of snl which is kind of it, it's based loosely on tina Fey's time at snl right yes very loosely. like extremely loosely yeah but yeah. like it's it's still fun like it's a fun show yeah all right I think that's all I've got for my picks. Let's move on to Devin's pick. Devin's been watching so a lot are... of Doctor Who, but not new Who, but well, new not... Who, but like, like a few years old Who. So Devin, yeah, tell, I... tell us what you've been up to. So I've been watching, I uh, am currently fun employed. So I have been watching quite a bit of TV. So I apparently overloaded this section. I'm sorry, guys. I have a lot to talk about. The first thing that I've been talking about, or I want to talk about today is season 10 of Doctor Who. Um, it is halfway through Peter Capaldi's season or hi- halfway through his run. And I think my job here is I'm going to try to convince you guys to watch it because okay. I don't know if any of you two have watched any Doctor Who and I don't think it matters because look before him, the one that got all like the fanfare and everyone, the one that everybody loved was David Tennant and David Tennant is like everyone's boyfriend, right? He's this like, tall adorable british man that you just want to take home and meet your parents right yeah and then they bring in matt smith who is like kind of the same but he's not as tall and oh, he wears bow ties he's tumblr's and boyfriend right he's tumble yeah he's tumblr's <laughs> boyfriend and then they're like you know what we're doing hard left to old man and that's who peter capaldi is he's hard left to old man but what they did is instead of like giving him episodes where you're like don't you just love him like they did for the Matt Smith and David Tennant, they're giving him good episodes that have like solid, interesting premises that are like really impressing me, like very consistently. Like I I will say there's an episode towards the end that I think is the best implementation of time travel anything in any show, including Tennant and Back to the Future. Okay. And that's like, that is like a hill I will die on. So for you guys, I think you should watch it. I think I know which episode you're talking about because I have okay. seen this season. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. This is the this is the season with Billy, right? The Ooh, Billy. the uh female companion who's not Clara. No, this is Clara's last season. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the one with Billy yet. That's next season. Okay, so you watch season 9. Oh, then yes. I watch season 9. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's that one. The gra- ignore the graphic on the screen then. Because... Oh, is the graphic season ten? Yeah. So. Oh well, then yeah, I've, that's that's what I'm looking. I, so okay. Looking so, next. um. But do I have good stuff coming? You then? do. Is there a good there, episode there's a up? lot okay. of good stuff. I think this episode I'm thinking of might even be in your in the season you're in because you're in the um Arya Stark. Episode, right? yeah, 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 like the the Game of Thrones crossover. But I mean, like Macy Williams, that's leaves, her name. Yeah, yeah. So like Macy Williams is a part, and then Jenna Coleman leaves, and there's a couple episodes of just Peter Capaldi, and that's what I'm talking about. Okay, and those are phenomenal. Ryan, would you watch this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love how excited you are. Here's, here's, like, I like sci-fi. I know okay. a lot of people who like Doctor Who, so it's mm-hmm. it's I, it's it's that I'm not not interested in it. It's just okay. with the amount of doctors that are out there, different people have different ones. Like I'm seriously about this just to be like, fine, I'll watch it, but I'm going to start at the last season that came out and watch that from episode one to the last one, and then do it mm-hmm. backwards like you did with The Simpsons, I think, or yeah. something with some show, mm-hmm. because that's really the only way that I'm going to be able to like piecemeal this because if i go back and watch like the first doctor not even from the first doctor if i happen to start off at the season where they have 
Britain as a giant spaceship in space again, because that's the only episode I've ever seen, like, even five minutes of. Like, if oh, I no. end up back at that season again and, re, you know, and start there and watch it, it's going to be the longest, like, drawn-out process of my life so far to try to watch Doctor Who, if, if that's how it starts off for me. So, well, you know, so if, I, I'm well a, don't worry, Ryan. I've got two ways to get Ryan into Doctor Who. Um, okay. One is we have him start with Eccleston. Like, we give him a list of episodes to watch. For, right. From Eccleston, Tenet, maybe some Matt Smith, and then Capaldi. Like, just a few mm. a few of the best episodes, like The Doctor Dances. Um, yeah. Girl but, in the Fireplace, Blink. Yes. The other, wa- other way we can get Ryan into this is give him the Doctor Who, Star Trek, The Next Generation crossover comics. No, no. Let's that's just do it the thing? first way. Let's just do it the Hold first that's, way. That's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah, they, there are Star, Star Trek, Doctor Who uh, comics crossovers. Is it the good? O- so. the, o- the only way I would ever accept that is, is if it turns out that the Doctor is a Q. That's it. It would make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, I'll you got to watch. Well, we, 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 okay, perfect. We, we, I have them on DVD. It's all on HBO Max. Um, yeah, I feel like we should be sponsored by them, but we're not. We're gonna be talking a lot about. We're gonna be them talking today. a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have to get Ryan in on Doctor Who. So that's awesome. Maybe maybe right, maybe so, we'll do a a triple feature of Doctor Who episodes coming up. That would be so fun. <laughs> Where you and oh, I, I just make Ryan watch different episodes of Doctor Who. Um. All right. Ryan so, shaking his head. I'm about it. <laughs> all right. Moving on from Doctor Who, let's talk about Fargo. But not the most so, recent season of Fargo. Again, not the most recent. I, I Ryan this, or Devin, this is supposed to be st- recent stuff. But you're you're tr- we're getting there. My last one's there. recent. Okay. So this okay. is the so, Ewan McGregor season, right? This is Ewan McGregor starring or with Ewan McGregor and also Ewan McGregor. Uh, have you seen this one, Alan? I have. This is the last season okay. I watched. I have not watched and, the most recent Chris Rock season. I haven't either. Have you seen any of Fargo beyond the first episode that we watched for our pilot special, Ryan? No. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you... I feel like you like the Star Wars prequels enough to just be okay with more Ewan McGregor? Eh? I mean, I, uh, I'm i okay enough with what he did in Moulin Rouge to watch anything that he ever did. Okay, good, good pull. I, I saw a joke online this week. It was uh, straight men who are Star Wars fans like women and you and McGregor. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's, um, that's very right. Yeah, no, he's really good in this. Carrie Coon is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this, this, I mean, season, the cast is amazing. Yeah, this season's really good because um, it comes back to more modern day than season two did like season two did, went back in time this season yeah, it was in the 70s right yeah this season yeah. was really good and had a really good uh story throughout it uh mary elizabeth Win- winstead was in here mm-hmm. who a lot of people would know as ramona flowers from scott pilgrim um and, well, then, and it does the thing, like plot wise, it does the thing that I love the Coen Brothers movies do is it takes this person that just has this very simple ambition and puts them way in over their head. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And this this season of all of them, I think, has the most nods to other Coen Brothers movies. So we recently reviewed Barton Fink, uh, the lead lady cop. I forget her name at one point is sitting on the beach in the exact pose as the picture from Barton Fink. Or they have that whole scene at the bar where the dude talks to Sam Elliott. And that's almost shot for shot recreated in this. And like, I, I don't know, as as a Coen Brothers fan, it just hit every single right note for me, I think. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's available on Hulu, I believe. I think it is, yeah. I watch it on, it's on Netflix over here. Okay. Yeah, I Netflix over there has got to be a whole different beast, right? It's a whole other thing. It's so weird. All right. All right. So Devin's last pick is a beautiful, or, Actually no, a new. perfect planet. All right. It's a perfect planet. It's almost. Okay. So it's a na- nature documentary show. It is brand new Richard Attenborough nature, doc- nature documentary show. I love nature documentaries. We don't get to talk about them much on this channel. I am going to pitch this one to you guys because if you've seen planet earth, if you've seen planet earth two, if you've seen 
Uh, I think there's one called like Blue World or something that focuses on oceans. This one approaches it differently. So in a lot of other nature documentaries, what they'll do is they'll go, okay, today's episode is about the rainforest. Look at the monkeys in the rainforest. Look at the bats in the rainforest. The rainforest. Uh, but this one is actually interesting because what it does is it takes a very narrow topic and talks about how that affects like creatures all over the world. So episode one is volcanoes and talks about how volcanoes affect animals all over the world. And I think it's fascinating as heck. Like I, I've never seen that approach to a nature documentary, I think. And I really like it. Okay. I haven't really watched many nature documentaries. Um, mm -hmm. Is this the, does this have Benedict Cumberbatch mis mispronouncing animal names again? The pangolins. <laughs> Penguins. No, it's okay. It's, look, it's Richard Attenborough who I love, but at some point guys, we have to let that poor man retire from voiceover work because he has this very distinct, very proper voice. And now it's the point where he just sounds like your grandpa telling you about birds. And like, I love him, but please let him retire. Yeah. I have not watched planet earth or any of these nature documentaries. Oh um, man. I probably should at some point, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> Ryan, how about you? Have you watched any of these? Yeah, I've, I've watched almost all of them, and this one's been on my radar. Uh, okay. I love nature. I love nature documentaries. That's all you need to tell me, Devin. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, like, I mean, okay, so let's see, instead of obsessing over, TV, you know, like doing TV shows when I was a kid, uh, like mm -hmm. you guys know, I watched Discovery Channel and History Channel. You know, I went from mm -hmm. like Nickelodeon to that. Um, and like, I begged my mom as like a 10, 11 year old for a VHS of an hour long special Discovery Channel did on snakes. That's awesome. So, I mean, you know, other kids be like, oh, a nature documentary in class. And I'm like the only kid like bright eyed watching the TV screen. Everybody <laughs> else is falling asleep. So, I mean, you know, I, what's it called again? Perfect, Perfect planet. planet. Yeah. Okay. I'll be looking that one up. Okay. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> that makes my day. All right. We're going to talk some, some more British stuff later on when we get to the mm -hmm. to get to the news section but real quick last thing we're gonna talk about that we watched which was ryan's pick which i think we all watched is a uh, yeah. wandavision let's, yep. let's talk um, some uh let's talk some wandavision guys oh boy so let's see wandavision came out uh there's four episodes right uh there's four episodes out right now i saw the first 10 minutes of it like at the at the start of the month I was too tired to finish, so I turned it off, and I watched the rest of them, like, this past week, and was really confused, like everybody else, with the first three episodes, and now things are starting to make sense, and I'm happy it's going the direction that it's going. Yeah. So, so we're going to, let's say, let's spo stay spoiler-free for a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. If, so, we haven't really talked about this on this show. I talked about this a few weeks ago with Josh from Victims and Villains mm -hmm. for the first three episodes. Devin, what do you think of WandaVision so far? I think the format's interesting. I think I'm happy with the direction that they're currently taking it because I think that if every... If the first two, without spoiling, if the first two episodes, maybe even three, are indicative of the format they're going to use throughout the entire show, I would get quickly bored. Okay. Um, I'm glad they switched things up when, the way that they did. Um, but I think it's clever. I like the fact that I learned a little bit about it behind the scenes and found out that they were using like authentic cameras, like from like time period, accurate cameras, oh, really? and correct aspect mm -hmm. ratios. Yeah. Like Good. that's so cool to me. And like the effects, like when, when she's doing her powers, I'm hoping that's not a spoiler. If she's doing any powers, <laughs> the effects are appropriate to the era in which they're supposed to be filming, which I love. Like they don't put like, CGI things in the fifties. Cause they didn't have that. Yeah. It's all like, yeah. like she's moving plates around and they're using like fishing wire. Right. Um, and I yeah. love that. Like, give me that. Yeah. And one of the things that gripped me even after like the first episode and why I kept watching to be perfectly honest. And I don't think that this is going to be spoilers at all, but I was getting like call of duty, black ops vibes. Okay. Uh, oh, weird. Into it. And I can explain that more if you guys want me to, but I mean, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, so there's something, there's something other that's <laughs> yeah. was that go, going on. So yeah. was was and, that like the the overall plot of Black Ops, where like you kind of see like a guy that doesn't seem like he fits, and and that's like you guess there's something a little bigger going on. No, 
Okay. That's not what I'm referencing. <laughs> oh, God. I tried so hard, Ryan. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it spoiler free. So that's why I'm just yeah. like putting that out there. People, yeah. anybody who's played the first Black Ops game as much as, as, as much as I did, especially the storyline, and then watched WandaVision, they will know what I'm talking about. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's get into some spoilers because I, I have thoughts, okay, cool. but uh, we're going to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen WandaVision and you don't want spoiled, go ahead and hit that mute button. Don't go anywhere. Just wait for the, yeah. the <laughs> image to change and the the bottom. Yeah, right down here. Wait for that image to change from WandaVision. Then we'll be done talking about it. Um, I'll make funny facial expressions. Yeah. It'll work out. So uh, Chad's leaving for a bit. Friend of the show, Chad's leaving no! for a bit. Um, <laughs> So episode four of this show, they break the sitcom format and show um, mm-hmm. show what's going on outside of this world that we've been in for the first three episodes. So we get to see uh, Randall Park from Ant-Man and the Wasp come back. Um, we get to see Darcy from the Thor movies played by Kat Dennings come in. And it's a lot of fun and they do a lot of revealing of what's really happening like behind the curtain stuff mm-hmm. um and I, I think it's a really good change of pace from where the show's been heading um but what did you guys think of the change of direction for this episode i was relieved okay <laughs> i was too to be fair yeah. i i i was worried that they were gonna do this too fast but i feel like they gave us just enough but not too much because there's a little bit there. It was like, well, wait, what's actually going on here? Cause you get a lot of answers now, mm-hmm. but there's also like the question of like, so was that just a vision that Wanda saw or is she just animating visions body? And that's gross. what's really there. <laughs> Very gross. So that, that begs the question. What do you guys think? Do you think that was just a, something that she saw or is she animating his body? I think it's something she saw. I don't think that she's animating is, but I heard there was like a cut, like I heard there was a cut, like after post credit scene mm-hmm. for infinity war, where like she like unzips a body bag that, and he's in it. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of research after this episode. Cause I like need to know what's going on yeah. before they tell me what's going on. And like, I heard that that happened, which like implies that maybe that's like his corpse, but like, that's gross. I don't know. I, I want it to just be a vision. Okay. So, there's a part of me that is hoping that it's just her like manipulating everything. And mm-hmm. it was her having like a, like a, like a, like a, a flashback, you know, like that type of thing of like seeing him dead. But even if it's him being animated, like, isn't he a robot? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it would, so, I mean, it would pretty much like having a reprogrammed burnt out Johnny five in your apartment. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, like you're dangling your like dead boyfriend from like fishing wire from the ceiling. I mean, I don't know. Cause like when they were like together, she wasn't like, you're just a toaster. Like she was like, I love the person that is you. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, it's not like, it's not like he's going to smell. That's fair. Good point. Yeah. Good point. And I like that that's a big point. I didn't even think about that. I didn't know how else to describe that. And I tried to make it as short <laughs> as possible. So <laughs> it, it makes me think of the uh, yeah. Age of Ultron commercial where it's just Ultron singing There Are No Strings on Me. Like he's just yeah. like a, a, a puppet being manipulated by Wanda. Uh, it's an interesting idea to me. Like I get that. Yeah, he's not like an actual corpse, but it's still kind of like just the idea of her animating him is creepy enough to me that I really want mm-hmm. to see if that's where they're going with this. Um, Cause that would also explain yeah, definitely why be a turn. it would also explain why he's becoming more aware that something's not right with everything around him. Yeah. Um, but w- one thing that we saw in this that we have not seen in the MCU at all is people coming back from the snap, the, the, post blip stuff yeah what oh did my you gosh. guys think of the opening yeah. sequence where monica rambo reappears in the hospital and there's mass chaos it is possibly the best thing i have seen from marvel since like what phase two i think or phase three okay to be perfectly honest like because wow. that's because i mean that's something that i've you know like okay cool like 
to me, the core superheroes are becoming like the Skywalkers for me. Like, that's fine. Cool. (laughs) I get the storyline. I want to know about everybody else. And I know Mm -hmm. that's what S.H.I.E.L.D. was trying to do, that TV show. That's what they were trying to do with that and Mm -hmm. like Daredevil and all those shows. But this is what I want to see. I want to see the chaos of everybody coming back people being told very hard, confusing truths. That was an amazing sequence. And I feel like they, they. Well, I think, I mean, I think to Ryan's point, I think that it's a part of the snap that we needed to see. Yeah. Because we saw it in Spider-Man homecoming far from home. Sorry. We saw it in far from home. And it was like a joke. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. you were like, what? Marching fan in a basketball game, that quirky. <laughs> it yeah. was it was a it was a high school news broadcast. So yeah, you get you get. Yeah. I guess we did see a little bit of that, but actually seeing it happen in real time was really mm-hmm. interesting. And dealing with the repercussions of that with her mother having passed away is really interesting. Um, and they're making her an interesting character, which I I'm glad they are because I think I know where her character is going. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I think I made a prediction when we talked about Endgame or Infinity War where her character is going to go. And, like, I want to be connected to her when it gets there. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think of the whole sword a- aspect of everything? Do you guys know sword from the comics or anything? Or No. You're going to have to explain that one to me. It's Yeah, I just went, oh, it's shield and sword. Got it. it, it. It's, it's, space, <laughs> it's space shield. That's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, okay. Neat. <laughs> okay, so space force. Okay, got it. <laughs> Oh, no. Yes. Um, so here's my question. Is Wanda the bad guy? I mean, we don't know enough yet to know if that's yes or no. Is this she? Is, this, is, this is where I like this is going. Because to me, this mm-hmm. is like... Um, this is somebody reacting to having a very dramatic, painful experience in their life. And this mm-hmm. is the like unhealthy coping mechanism. And because of her powers, this is, this is how it happens. Um, and I really hope that's the general, like, that's what's happening. Yeah. Because I think that'd be a really cool storyline. Okay. Devin, what do you think? I don't know. I watched a video and the video said that everybody is accounted for on the wall, except for the neighbor that keeps popping up. Yeah. And she's not a person that they know on the wall which means she's probably going to be a bad guy, which like, okay, I guess, I don't know. So I think that Wanda has 85% of the control of what's going on around her. I think, I think there is another party in play that we don't know about yet. And Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think the neighbor has a part to play in that. I also think that, Mm -hmm. Uh, Dottie, played by Buffy the Vampire Slayer's, um, the girl, the actress who played Anya on Buffy. I think she oh, yeah. had, she's going to play into this more because when you first meet her, they're like, she's the key to everything. Um, so I don't know if it's like Mephisto or what's going on, um, or if it's Hydra trying to bring back like Ultron or something like that. Um, something, there's another power at play. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be cool. I mean, I don't know if I need to see Wanda as the bad guy because I think I, I think they're going to keep her in other movies. But I do want to see her be her emotional state mm-hmm. be manipulated. I think, and that sounds weird, and I don't love that I said it like that either. But I, I think that it, it's an interesting in for a bad guy. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, we got a question in the chat. Uh, Raving Bob is Ooh. asking about our thoughts on the GameStop situation. <laughs> uh, raving bob thank you so much so yeah gamestop uh i know i'm gonna go out right i'll i'll start i love this i love that they're doing this i don't like that robin hood stopped them from doing it i actually like research stock trading for a whole day because like i now feel like i missed out on something big i love what's happening yeah same here yeah um Ryan made a good joke about his Robin Hood app changing to Nottingham. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I did was I down, uh, I, uh, was it, I downloaded an app that you can like customize all of your app names 
And so <laughs> all I did, like, so I, I downloaded the app. I reset my home screen as close to the original home screen that I could. And I renamed Robin Hood into, into Nottingham. And <laughs> I took the screenshot and I deleted the app because I didn't want any of that stuff on my phone after yeah. I did it. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 it's interesting. I Finally, people are starting to get back at... Um, for the past 30 years, things have been happening on Wall Street that shouldn't have been happening. Finally, yeah. people are calling all of this stuff out, and they are forcing people to take notice. And because of this, people like Devin, you said you researched this stuff for one whole day. Like a day, this, yeah. This is what needs to happen. Because, yeah. to be honest, like it, 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 it's been bothering me for 15 years. Every time I see financial news, it's been like a thorn in my side. And now finally people are standing up and doing what they need to do to, to make other people take notice. So, yeah. So what Yay. I'm curious, is, has anyone in our chat bought into GameStop stock? Like, has anyone done this? Cause I like need to know, or like, has anyone like, cause I heard it's like GameStop. I heard it's AMC. Now I heard it's blockbuster, blockbuster video. Blockbuster yeah. video. If, if blockbuster video comes back because of this, it'll be all worth it. And I'll I don't be care so what happy. any fed hedge fund guys say, I want blockbuster video back. <laughs> I don't even Our care. edgy opinions here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what anyone thinks. We're bringing back blockbuster guys. Ra Raving Bob says his brother bought stocks and made two K. No way. Oh man. Yeah, this oh thing started out at like 20 bucks. And then yeah. within a, like it started out at 20 bucks a week, uh, a week later it was 60. And then in literally 24 hours, it went from like 50 to $60 up to like 390, I think. That's amazing. And now it's, I didn't check it today, but I think it broke 400 recently. I, that's so cool. I'm so happy for that guy's brother. Like, yeah, that's, that's where I wish I was, where I like could cash out at $2,000 for like joke stock. Well, have you He's heard? Have you heard of Dogecoin? <laughs> Dogecoin. I did hear. Isn't that isn't that like going to be the big thing now? Supposedly, we'll see. Um, yeah. All right. So I think that wraps up our GameStop and WandaVision chat. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, some other news stuff. Uh, let's talk about the Snyder Cut, guys. So uh, the Snyder Cut is actually has a official release date now. If anyone in the in any viewers out there don't know what the Snyder Cut is. Uh, in 2017, the Justice League film that was released um, was re recut and re-edited by Joss Whedon and the execs at Warner Brothers, pretty much taking it away from Zack Snyder after he left for a family emergency, family tragedy that he had to go deal with, oh. which is completely understandable. Um, so the film was not his original vision as a sequel to Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Uh, ever since then, fans on the internet wanted to see the version of the film that he intended to make from the get-go. Because uh, there was a lot of things in trailers even that were different between the two films. Um, so HBO Max is finally going to release the Snyder Cut uh, after years of petitions online. The release date is Thursday, March 18th. So we will be doing that on our normal show. You have to watch this podcast. Um, it is going to be a four hour film. So it'll be a two hour podcast probably. Oh, jeez! Um, but before that, we're going to make Devin watch the original Justice League. The, I haven't seen the, it yet. The Whedon cut. Um, but D Ryan and I saw the original back when it came out. So we'll re... Ryan doesn't have to rewatch the original Justice League if he doesn't want to. <laughs> he gets a pass. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Hold on. <laughs> Is this like, so I haven't watched it because I just get bored with DC superheroes really fast. And that might be like a, a rude thing of me to think, but like, is that a common opinion? Like, do a lot of people think that like Justice League, the movie, the Joss Whedon cut was bad? Yes. Like even in chat, like, did you guys not like it? I enjoyed it. Um, when I first saw it, but we'll get into like where I was in my mental state of mind when that movie came oh, out. Oh no. Cause there's a Ooh. lot to unpack there. Um, okay. But there it's not. So my biggest problem with it is you have the setup to a trilogy with man of steel, Batman V Superman, and then justice league. If you watch man of steel and Batman V Superman, they fit together very well. Justice League does not deliver on 
anything that they set up in those films, tone wise, oh, story wise, wow. character wise, it just falls flat. And that's my mm. that's my biggest problem with Justice League. What I think the Snyder Cut's going to do is redeem the, those characters, redeem those storylines, and hopefully provide payoff. Um, that's my take on man, it. Man, in four hours, it's got to be doing something, though. Because, like, that's the biggest movie I think I've ever watched. Yeah. Is it the longest movie I've watched? Yes? I think it is. Yeah. Like, the only movies that are close to that are, like, Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, well, wasn't wasn't there that like Civil War movie like Gods and Generals that had an intermission at the theater because it was so long? But I think yeah. that was only like three hours. Mm-hmm. Like, why? All right, why is this so long? Do you know? Uh, well, the, the the working cut when when Zack Snyder left the film was around mm-hmm. was close to three hours, but I think they mm-hmm. went back and added stuff that wasn't originally intended to be in the film. Because originally Justice League was supposed to be two films. Justice League Part 1, Justice League Part 2. And I think oh. they're putting more of the Part 2 stuff into this than they did, than they were intending to, to begin with. So I think it's more of that. Uh, in the chat, Raving Bob says The Irishman was almost four hours. Oh, it was almost four hours, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I need to watch that one. In the chat, AMB5688 says Justice League was not great. Oh. Um, yeah. How much of the fundamental story changes? I, I don't know how much of the actual story changes. I think it's still going to be um, Steppenwolf coming down and trying to collect mother boxes and all of that. So I think the story cha- stays the same. I think a lot of what's going to change is style and tone and mm. just the girth. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> the girth. It's going to be girthier. Um, Girthy. <laughs> speaking of mother boxes, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know what this is. As a tie into the Snyder Cut, um, have you guys ever had a meal box delivered to your house where they send you all the ingredients and you make a, a, a meal for yourself? No. It, no, but it's like one. It's really one of my dreams. Well, there's going like, to I want that. There's going to be a, a meal box called the Mother Box from Wonderland Restaurants. Uh, to tie into Justice League, uh, each box will include several pre-prepared refrigerated food courses with multiple drinks, all inspired by Justice League characters. So here's what here's what you get in your meal. You get the Ocean Trench, which is fish and t- chips. Oh. Uh, a Big Belly Burger, which is a big burger chain in the DC universe. Resurrection, which is some kind of corn-based dish. They haven't really released the details for a lot of these. <laughs> Ancient Themyscirin Fire. Uh, Jitter. I don't know. They haven't said oh, what it is. Uh, snacks Fire. and extras. Cool Bra Beer, which I'm guessing is another. Um, oh, no, I think I've heard of that. I think that's a good beer. Yeah. And then Jitter's Coffee, which is going to be a canned cold brew coffee, which is the coffee shop from the Flash TV show, which I'm not sure is in the comics or other stuff. But the the problem with this is it's not going to be available until April or May. So we're not going to be able to watch this four hours of the Snyder Cut with all of this food. With the food. We'll just have to make our own Big Belly Burgers and, I guess for you, Devin, fish and chips. Just the fish and chips part. No, legit. I think this is a cool idea. I'm sad it's releasing so late because I think it's really cool to, like, have, like, a themed dinner night. Mm-hmm. and like watch a thing and then have like food that matches the thing. We actually used to do stuff like that. And I thought it was the neatest thing in the world. Like, do you guys do that? Or am I just like a weird person? I've got to add something to my bucket list now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it occasionally. Like if I'm going to sit down and watch chef, I'll try to make like his uh, pasta beforehand. Mm-hmm. Or like when we did chef on the show, I made like the whole meal with the molten lava yeah. cake. It's molten. Uh, it was molten. <laughs> um, so occasionally I'll try to find something close to it. Like if I if I'm gonna sit down and watch The Godfather, I want like a, a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. I don't know why, but I do. Um, I want horse meat so bad during that movie. Um, so when, whenever I watch Ninja Turtles on that, uh, <laughs> no, um, yeah, uh, uh, um, I, pizza. I mean, mm-hmm. 
when when I was a kid, I had both VHS tapes of both of the live action ones. And before both of them, there was that classic Pizza Hut commercial with the Little League baseball player kid and the coach takes him mm-hmm. to like Pizza Hut. So oh, whenever yeah. we'd watch, you know, Ninja Turtles, I would always like beg my parents like, or, you know, you've got to order Pizza Hut. You have to like, you know, we're watching the movie. We have to have, you know, pizza, you know, it's, it's you know, nothing says the same. Nothing says authentic New York pizza like Pizza Hut. Exactly. So, I mean, so, so there's that. And the reason why I said before I have to, you know, check stuff off my bucket list is I, I I need to go back and see all of the food that was on the table in Wayne's world when they do the like, uh, 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 advertising scene where there's like, Oh yeah, people only do stuff because they get paid and he's wearing all the Reebok crap. Um, I, exactly. I want to go back (laughs) and see what all the food is on that table. And then, watch wayne's world with all of that food in front of me uh riffing bob asks in the chat are we excited for the suicide squad which will be coming out to hbo max in august i'm excited for it okay no i am i am excited to see what james gunn does with with a new crew of uh a new crew for the suicide squad i'm excited to see what the john cena show that they're doing is gonna look like um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for pretty much everything coming out to HBO Max from Warner Brothers this year, uh, because I don't have to leave my home to go see it. Like, we don't have it in the in the rundown for the show today, but Godzilla versus King Kong is coming to HBO Max oh, in yeah, March right. as well. And um, the reason we're not talking about that in depth here is because one of us refuses to watch the trailer, and we weren't going to make him watch the trailer, Ryan. Um. <laughs> But what's, what's really nice is that I probably wouldn't have gone to theaters to see that movie. But if I can watch it from my living room, I'm going to watch it from my living room. Now, hopefully by the time Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad comes out, I'll be able to go to the theaters and see it. But mm-hmm. if not, then I'm prepared to watch it here. So, But I know for a fact I was not going to go to the theaters to see Space Jam 2. So no, <laughs> I'll watch that on HBO Max. But yeah, I'm excited no, for the I mean, Suicide I mean, Squad. I think Suicide Squad's a cool idea. Like, I really like the whole, like... You know, these are the bad guys and we're going to force them to do a nice thing. I like that. I think it was really wasted on the plot of the original Suicide movie. And I want to see I want to see that done better, I think. Well, there there is rumors that there is an air cut of the original Suicide Squad. No, movie. there's not. Yeah. Well, because there's a lot of Jared Leto's Joker that got cut out of that film. That's uh, right. There's a whole, dra- whole lot of drama behind the scenes of that movie as well. Um, so maybe we'll get to see that. But... In other news, when it comes to director's cuts of movies, um, Kevin Smith dropped some news on his podcast, uh, Fat Man Beyond, this this week that I thought I'd bring up to you guys because it's really interesting. So Perfect. he worked with Miramax, who was run by He Who Should Not Be Named for a while. Um, yes. <laughs> and their catalog was bought out by Viacom and Paramount. Um Supposedly, Paramount reached out to Kevin Smith and t- about doing a Blu-ray of Jersey Girl, and Kevin what? Smith said if he does that, he wants to do a he wants to release his director's cut, which is a lot longer and probably makes the film a lot better. But he wants to call it Jersey Girl: The Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 about a year and a half ago we did we went through all of Kevin Smith's films. For, leading mm-hmm. up to Jay and Silent Bob reboot. We didn't do Jersey Girl. I have re- since then watched Jersey Girl. I think this film will benefit a lot from the cut scenes because the one thing that Kevin Smith does really well is dialogue and like mm-hmm. long speeches. And there's a scene in here where Ben Affleck gets up in front of a town hall meeting and gives a speech, but you don't get to see the speech. You get to see a montage of the speech and just music playing over it. So you, you miss the whole speech. But he changes everyone's mind in the town hall and you don't get to hear any of it. I feel like the director's cut of that will have the whole speech and be a hell of a lot better for it. So just, I'm just, on board. I'd watch it. Yeah. Just, just wanted to let yeah. you guys know, cause I'm excited to hear all of to see if that actually happens. To see that speech. Yes. Um, all right. Moving on from HBO max in the Snyder cut. Uh, they're making a Cloverfield sequel. <laughs> But not like a spinoff, like, oh, hey, we're going to take this movie and make it into this Cloverfield series. 
they're going to be a, it's going to be a direct sequel to the original 2008 Cloverfield movie. It's going to be written by Joe Barton, who is working on the upcoming Gotham PD series for HBO Max, which is spinning off from the Batman. Um, it, this film will not be found footage. There's not much known about it besides the fact that it's happening. How do you guys feel about the Cloverfield franchise? I'm so happy it's not found footage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Does it not work for you, Ryan? Do you not like that? I'm fine with found footage. I'm just not fine of the whole, you know, hey, let's do a found footage movie. But remember, it's got to be shaky because it's in the hands of somebody who's not a professional. So we have to make sure the audience gets vertigo. Like, I... <laughs> Like, I'm not a fan of that. And to be honest, like that's what to me, that's what hurt Cloverfield. Like I could I could not do it. I couldn't. And but I mean I'm happy to hear that it's not. I'm happy to hear mm-hmm. that it's a real direct sequel to the original film. Um, because I'm interested, you know, giant monster, satellite coming down from space, you know, like I I they got it has my interest. <laughs> Well, is it going to try to incorporate all of the other, like, disparate branches of Cloverfield? Because, like, isn't also, like, 10 Cloverfield Lane is Cloverfield, and also the Cloverfield Paradox is Cloverfield? Like, is it going to try to be the connecting tissue that, like, is all of those things? I think the Cloverfield Paradox tried to be that, and then it wasn't. Um, I I think going into this film, knowing that it's going to be a Cloverfield sequel, is the best thing that happened to this. Because those other two kind of feel the Cloverfield aspect feels like an afterthought. Um, mm-hmm. But. Well, I'd never seen Cloverfield paradox, but someone told me that it's basically like a whole other sci-fi movie. And they're like, well, we can't just market this. Let's have somebody say the word Cloverfield in the movie and tie it together. Yeah, pretty much. That's what happened. But gross. I'm kind of bummed that we found out about this. Cause one of the best things about the Cloverfield movies is the advertising and how you don't know it's coming until it's already here. Like the first one had the trailer in front of Transformers where everyone's like, wait, what was that? Uh, (laughs) And then uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, no one knew about it until they dropped the Mm -hmm. first trailer. And then it came out a few weeks later. Uh, Paradox, uh, Cloverfield Paradox was like, oh, hey, here's a Super Bowl commercial. And oh, hey, after the game, you can go watch this on Netflix, which is still like the biggest marketing move i've ever seen and it, it was kind of cool though. it was really yeah. cool um but i have a theory on this that has nothing to do okay. with the plot of cloverfield or anything so the original cloverfield made 25 was made for 25 million dollars but it grossed 172 million mm-hmm. i think this is how hollywood gets back into the swing of things after warner brothers having to do hbo max for a year because I don't see them going beyond this year with this format. I think Mm -hmm. having a studio like Paramount do a smaller budget sequel to Cloverfield where they can, where they they'll get people back into the theaters for this in like 2023. I think that's how you bring Hollywood back and you, you use smaller films that will bring in big money. I think this is the key to that. And I'm really excited to see that. I think that's a good idea too. Cause I, and I think I want to see that. I think I want to see like the films that you can't really release to like HBO max to much fanfare, but will play well in a theater. Like that's yeah. what I want to see more of. I think. Ryan, how about you? I, I agree. I, I think doing <laughs> a, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's lower budget, which means they're going to have to focus more on other aspects of the film than just the facts. Um, it's not going to be handy cam footage. Yeah. And I feel like that's the right move. And it's a business. They got to make money and money from this for the studio is going to go into other things. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah, no, I, it's simple. Yes, I agree. All right. (laughs) Nice. All right. So I think that's all I've got for news. So let's move on to Devin's first story, which is the great stand up to cancer bake off. Yes. All right, guys. I am so incredibly pumped about this. I don't know how much Great British Baking Show or Great British Bake Off, as we're allowed to call it, uh, you guys have seen. Uh, It's a whole thing with the name. You can't say the words Bake Off in America because Pillsbury owns the copyright on the words Bake Off. But that's the name of the show. So it's Baking Show in America. Gross. Um, (laughs) But they just announced the the great Stand Up to Cancer contestants. And it's the celebrity version of the Great British Baking Show. And 
there's a lot of uh, comedians and, and um, stars that I don't really know about, but there's two huge names on here that I'm super pumped for. One of them is Daisy Ridley. The other one is, and I'm going to make sure I say his name right, James McAvoy, yeah. somebody you guys have probably never heard of. Uh, I am, I wait, can't tell you. Wait, why would we not have heard of James McAvoy? No, I know, I know you've heard of okay. him. It was, uh, it was me being quickly sarcastic. Okay. But no, like, I'm so pumped. Like, I don't know why I'm so interested to watch these two people bake food, but I want to watch them bake food. Well, one's going to be using the force. The other's going to be using his kin- kinetic powers. Um, Nobody will be touching the food. It'll be so sanitary. And um, James McAvoy is just going to go through all 23 different personalities as he's cooking. So That's really what I want to see, though. I think people here are a little bit mad about it because it's like, really big stars and apparently the root of the show is that they're like b-level british stars and these people have like made it past that but i think it's cool they have my interest i'll watch it yeah i i'm interested in watching this i don't think Mm if i think if it wasn't for daisy ridley and james mcavoy i would have no interest um (laughs) my wife has watched the show occasionally and by occasionally mean she watches it i just tune in occasionally um yeah so what is, what is this on in the UK? Because I don't know where to find it here. So it's interesting. So in the UK, it's on BBC iPlayer, which is something that you get for free if you pay your TV license over here. Um, because every Brit has to pay a TV license every year of 100 some pounds. Uh, and that gets them access to live TV. That's also what pays the salary of everybody that works on the BBC. Okay. So if you pay that, you get BBC iPlayer. Um, typically it drops on Netflix in the United States. Okay. Uh, yeah. in the chat, going back to the big celebrities that they've had on there, um, uh-huh. they had Michael Sheen and Jamila Jamil from, Oh, that's so cool. Uh, speaking of Michael Sheen, I don't, and going back to the doctor who thing, have you seen yeah. what him and David Tennant have been up to? Yeah, that they have a, it's a like a podcast kind of thing, right? It's a po- it's a TV show. I forget what it's called, but every clip I see of it is hilarious, and I cannot find it over here at all. So, um, oh, it's on BBC iPlayer. I should watch you it. You and I need to talk after this and figure out something. Because, oh, we will. We'll figure it out. Uh, Ryan, what about you? Any interest at all in the Great British Baking Show and watching Daisy Ridley bake a souffle? I mean, I might watch that episode since it sounds kind of interesting, but typically I'm not a baking, like I'm, I'm not a cooking show person. Yeah. Like I was in high school, like I was in high school when the whole like baking show, like cooking channel thing took mm-hmm. off and that's all people could talk about because nobody wanted to watch the news for like four years. <laughs> um, and that's, and that's seriously why cooking shows took off. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. and it was like, I tried watching a few of them, but I just, I can't like. I can't get into it. I, yeah. I I can't get into watching somebody on TV like cook. So, yeah. I, yeah. But I mean, it sounds interesting. I'll watch it. Yeah. You know, like that episode sounds interesting. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So moving on to Devin's next topic, Disney Plus Star. Yeah. So Disney Plus Star finally got a release date in the United Kingdom. What? Uh, is, this what, is my. What is Disney Plus Star for all of us over so here? So Disney in the Plus States? Star is the adults only version of Disney plus it's where they hide all the R rated movies. So the kids can't find them. It's the creepy back section of the video rental store with the weird beads in front and the creepy <laughs> guy next to it. But, That's Disney plus star. But instead of porn, it's just die hard. It's just right. It's just like die hard and Deadpool back there. Um, so yeah, that finally got a UK release date. I don't think it has an official release date in the U S just yet, because if it's anything like the original release of Disney plus, they're using us as a test market. Yeah. Um, and we are going to get it on February 23rd. So like 23 small days. <laughs> and I'll be able to tell you what the R rated section of Disney plus looks like. Awesome. I, I really hope that there's just like a director's cut of the Muppets on there. <laughs> um, I hope just Kermit swears the whole time for some reason. There needs to be an animation of, of like a curtain being pulled to the side. Like you're walking into that back room. Like every time you do. Yeah. yeah. And there has to be like a, like a random guy just standing in the corner, like a graphic of him just with his back hunched because he's trying to block the name of the thing that he's looking at. <laughs> he's exactly. To... <laughs> you just, 
<laughs> all right. Anything else with that? Or is that it? That's all I got. I'm just, right. I'm pumped for it. I can't wait. Well, speaking of R rated things from Disney, uh, your next story is about Deadpool 3. All right. So I got a couple of things about Deadpool 3, and um, I'm so excited about them. First off, we found out that um, Deadpool 3 is going to be a part of the MCU officially. Yes. And it's going to be rated R. This is not entirely new news, but it is exciting, and I really like that. The cool bit of news is that Ryan Reynolds released the uh, original plot of Deadpool 3 on Twitter. The original plot of Deadpool 3 was going to be a road trip movie with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine or Logan. And it would have been told in Rashomon style, if I'm saying that right. And the point of this style is that it's the same events told multiple times through multiple expe- uh, perspectives. Oh. oh, man, that's cool. I would love to see that movie. Hang on. Hang on. So just so I can wrap my head around, like, I want to translate what you said into my language. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> What it is, it's like, okay, so there's an episode of Futurama where Mm -hmm. there's an event that happens, and Uh Zap Brannigan and the crew of Planet Express get in the Star Trek BB chair that (laughs) Pike was in, in the original series, and they have to explain the events of what happened, but it's all told from a different point of view, so all of the events are kind of different, even though it's all the same thing, and you watch it again and again and again, until the very end and the the storyline. That would have been Deadpool 3. But with okay. Deadpool and Hugh Jackman, with 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 the Captain Pike Star Trek BB chair, it would have it almost would have had to be if they're going to do that yeah. style. They would have thrown that in somewhere. They yeah. had to have. Um, I'm kind of okay that they're not doing this because I feel like if they weren't bought out by Disney, mm-hmm. bringing in Logan, it would have been the way to go. But now that you have Deadpool in the MCU. There are so many mm-hmm. new avenues that you can explore. I think it's better not to explore Hugh Jackman as Wolverine again. I would lo- I still want to see them on screen together and it might happen mm-hmm. if they got like if if Hugh Jackman was down for this, I'm sure he'll be down for something down the line. Right. Um, but I'm I'm okay with this not happening. I'm excited to see Deadpool and other mutants in the MCU at some point. Um it's, for some reason, I just I just don't feel like that format fits MCU at all. Like, I feel like it's too far removed from the format of an MCU movie that I don't think they would do something like that. That feels like a Disney Plus series. Like, I feel like that's something yeah. they it could does, do on yes. Disney Plus. Uh, and they might. Who knows? Because they... Behind the curtain. Yeah. I feel like they're going to be am. doing a lot of stuff that we don't know about yet in the years yeah. to come. So... I have a want now, and I know it's not going to happen, but after Tell me. hearing... Okay, so I, I, I want a road trip buddy comedy with Deadpool, Captain America, and Smart Hulk. <laughs> Can their car just be like a little Fiat, too? And no, like no, half no, no, of it no, no, is no, Hulk no, trying to fit no. in the car? No? no, no okay. No, no. Nope. It is going to be a classic American muscle El Camino SS. <laughs> Why a a bench seat in the front. So there's room for only three. And so Captain America and uh, so Captain America and Deadpool are squished either at the doors or into each other. And then eventually Hulk just hangs out in the bed of the El Camino for the rest of the film. And they, you know, he accidentally breaks out the window and then that's how they communicate uh, through, through, uh, through, through the back. And I don't hate that. Is it weird that the only part of this movie that I wasn't excited about? Because like, I think the Rashomon style is cool. I think that adding Wolverine would have been cool. I don't know if I like the road trip aspect to it. I think for whatever reason, like road trip movies, are, like just feel too like not formulaic, but formulaic for me. I don't know. I I don't know. I maybe that's a dumb comment, but like I don't want to see him just in a car going the whole time. So there the one road trip movie that I want to see that we're never going to get because it's never going to be released is there is a movie called urban myths, a, uh, or it was, I guess it was a series, but, Mm -hmm. uh, it was called, it's about Michael Jackson, Elizabeth Taylor and Marlon Brando in the aftermath of nine 11. They're all in New York and need to travel back to LA but because all the flights are canceled, they all rent a car and travel cross country together. Is this real or they, is this like this is this is based this is an urban myth that this actually happened, but they made a movie about it with um 
Joseph Fiennes playing Michael Jackson. And part of the reason it got pulled is you had a white actor playing Michael Jackson, and that didn't go over well. Um, mm. I'm sure this movie wasn't great, but Stockard Channing played uh, Elizabeth Taylor, and Brian Cox played Marlon Brando. So that wow. exists in a vault somewhere. I want to see it. <laughs> I, I I'm like already offended at this movie. Yeah. It, it's not wow it, it can't be good so no you all right well i'm excited for deadpool 3 no matter what it is i am too i can't wait i'm sure there'll be i'm sure there'll be a lot of mcu callbacks and fun in it so all right moving on to borderlands 3 or borderlands the movie. so there is yeah so there's gonna be a borderlands movie this is my last bit of news there's going to be a borderlands movie um and they have one actor already picked out for it it's kevin hart um, he is going to be playing one of the lead characters of Borderlands. His name is Roland. Okay. I don't want to be judgmental, but I'm going to be because you guys know me. I don't want a Borderlands movie. I love the Borderlands video games. I think they're funny. I think they're you know neat and fun to do or fun to play. I don't want a movie of Borderlands. I think it loses all of the cool factor in it. Roland in the games is a like the only character that isn't funny. He is the emotional ground of it. And they cast Kevin Hart in that role, who's going to make it funny. And, like, if that's the direction they're going to go in, I don't think I want this movie that I already didn't want. And I, I, yeah. I, I, I would have casted him because I don't find him funny. So it's a perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You don't find him funny? It's a bit harsh of a comment. Yes, I'll fully. Admit, but, I mean, no, I don't really find him that funny. Like, it, it it depends on the role in the movie. There are sure there are movies that like come in, but I mean, it it like, it's a Borderlands movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the chat, Little Miss Moon says Kate Blanchett was also cast as Lilith. That's right. I heard about that. That's going to be cool. I think Kate Blanchett as Lilith. Is Kate be Blanchett cool. and. Uh, Kevin Hart are two different ends of the actor spectrum. Um, yeah. So I don't know what this movie is going to be. I don't know much about Borderlands at all. So I don't know if we need more video game movies. I mean, we need more good ones. I, it's weird that the That's best true. one we've had in recent memory is Sonic the Hedgehog. So <laughs> it's true. Though. It is. Um, okay. Okay. Do we think Kevin Hart's going to show up on the Young Rock TV show on NBC? I want him to. I really want him to. Yeah, young Kevin Hart. <laughs> they just, they, it's, he just shows up like at a football game or something. I think that's my favorite thing they do, though, is the Rock Kevin Hart relationship. I think that's I like that better than most movies he's in. Yeah, I feel like they need to remake like every movie that Schwarzenegger and Andy DeVito made with the rock and yes. heart. Cause it's the same dynamic. That's all it is. It is. Um, I completely agree. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> junior. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Twins, like twins would be twins. <laughs> yeah. I think if they remake junior though, Kevin Hart needs to be the one who has the baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, what they need to do is do a father of of the bride two uh, surprise and have them both be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to Ryan's pick for the news, uh, CBS has a new show called Clarice, which is a sequel to Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Okay. So Clarice, uh, the show is supposed to kick off a year after the events of Silence of the Lambs. So it. So. Uh, so. So the show to. Uh, sets off in 1993 and uh by all accounts it sounds really good to be perfectly honest um the only issue is that they can't mention hannibal at all what uh so there is a legal dispute between mgm and the guy that wrote the books that the movie's based on so the issue is that mgm owns the rights to uh the character of uh, actually, Clary Starling, uh, mm -hmm. Buffalo Bill, Han uh, and Hannibal, and then the author owns rights to like the other part of Starling's character, and and other and pretty much everything else that the MGM doesn't. 
And so they're going to try to get this show off the ground without mentioning like what put her in the limelight as an FBI agent to begin with, because the whole Silence of the Lambs thing kicked off her career. Um, In the article, the people who are making the show have said that that isn't an issue for them because they want to focus on her character because there's been three shows about Hannibal. So they feel like there's nothing that needs to be said there at all because it's all been done well. And they, Mm -hmm. uh, and they want to focus on a character that hasn't had that same, I guess, uh, words are escaping me right now. The same spotlight. Spotlight Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, A spotlight on the character um by all appearances like to be perfectly honest a lot of the actors and actresses like the mm-hmm. articles i looked up didn't weren't really talking about who who's involved in this all it was was the legal dispute and what's going on okay um but i mean this is something that i'm really fascinated in you guys both know that i love this this these characters and this storyline so mm-hmm. so it, story-wise it kind of makes sense that you don't mention hannibal you like you don't won't have to mention hannibal because they if you go and by the movies, they don't have contact for years up until Hannibal, right? Yes. So, oh, okay. so like I think it's like ten or fifteen years later. Will this show explain how she changed from Jodie Foster into Julianne Moore? You know, sometimes <laughs> you, you just it. need to let stuff like that go. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I could honestly. If I watched Hannibal, is it like that easy to let go? Devin, we're going to be doing the movie for the podcast. <laughs> Okay, got it. Um, so in the chat, is there any movie? Let us know if there is there a movie that you want to see a TV so, show sequel of that you haven't seen yet, like continuations for one single character from a movie. Um, how about you guys? Can you think of anything? I want to see a Babu Frick TV show <laughs> in the worst way. Okay, I can see that becoming Good. a Disney Plus. Yep. Ryan, how about you? I want him to teach me the ABCs or something. Okay, so a TV show to stretch out a character from a movie. Yeah. Uh, Not really stretch out, but I have a fan theory for all the Kevin Costner baseball movies that I really want to see filled out. Okay. The fan theory goes that all three movies are combined and the cornfield in uh, the Field of Dreams connects uh, Bull Durham and For the Love of the Game, which I really want to show that connects all three movies. Okay. And I, I, I have an idea in my head. It's not going to go anywhere because you know, for, nobody's going to want to pick that up. For me, I want to see a gay Perry from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, just a detective show with Val Kilmer playing gay yes. uh having to deal with everyone's shit like i will i want to see that show um that's what i want to see a spinoff of on hbo max that would be a lot of that would be fun all right and moving on mortal Kombat is getting a reboot in the film yes. series speaking of video game movies yeah yeah so speaking of video game movies so first off this movie's being directed by a simon mcquid I probably pronouncing his name wrong. Um, he hasn't done anything. Okay. <laughs> I spent 15 minutes trying to look this guy up and like one other movie ever. Um, so I'm really excited. Was really excited mm-hmm. about another Mortal Kombat movie because I feel the original Mortal Kombat movie is like the pinnacle gold standard for video game movies. That's how mm-hmm. I judge every video game movie that I watch. Um, and I read the article from uh, Destructo dot com which is the only one that i could really find um and it made me nervous and it's more of a muh. so it's like i'm really 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 excited read this and my hopes all went down the drain so why i'm, I'm gonna explain that so <laughs> the, um, calm down so, devin so, i just need to know so it, you're gonna have the traditional classic video game mortal Kombat characters are gonna be in it that's what the trailer shows mm-hmm. um and then this part in the article comes up Director Simon McQuid, again, probably mispronouncing his name, was eager to point out that Mortal Kombat will feature gore, blood, and fatalities, with with uh, with Tan adding that there are some crazy fatalities. They're brutal, man, said Tan, that they, they, uh, they, they don't hold back. Mortal Kombat is shooting for an R rating. Throwing my phone. Really? That was it? Like, that I, was enough? I am, this is, 
this is going to be another Hellboy, and I'm mad. You do not make a movie to make it a rating. You ruin a storyline okay. by doing okay. that. You write the story, and if it happens up being an R rating because of the content, it's an R rating. That's what happened with Hellboy. They were pushing for an R rating, and that's what hurt it. Because I, I can't tell you how many times I rolled my eyes in the first five minutes of that movie. I, okay, it's going to be the same thing. I think for Let something... Try to... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk Ryan off the edge a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think I think I can. Go, go for it. So I think with Hellboy, I think what they had was somebody on the Hellboy development team saw Deadpool and went, that's how you make an R-rated superhero movie. Let's make it Deadpool. And they made it Deadpool. I think that Mortal Kombat purposely trying for a hard R rating is Im- indicative of exactly the same thing that the video games had done. Mortal Kombat, the video games for years have been like shown to Congress and have been like held up as like, this is why video games are gross and corrupting and terrible. And the developers themselves of the video games say like, okay, how can we push the envelope with the fatalities now? How can we make this grosser and how can we make it more disgusting? I think having a movie development that mirrors the game development almost makes it truer to the video game franchise then. No. (laughs) So... That was my best shot. <laughs> From a produ- production standpoint, if you're making a movie like this, where one of the mo- most known things for Mortal Kombat is those fatalities, going into production, you need to know how much can we get away with from a blood and gut standpoint. Because if it's if you're gonna go for 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 broke, then you need to know that beforehand. So mm-hmm. I think the sto- like. Just from a visual standpoint, you need to know that you're going for R from the get-go in pre-production. Like I think story-wise, you don't rely on that. I don't think you have to rely on this movie is going to be rated R for the for the story. I think you can make a great story, and then when you have these fights and these fatalities, you can be like, okay, we're going to take this to take turn this up to eleven and just go nuts with the blood and stuff. But I don't think I don't think that has to do with the story. I think. If the story's going to suffer, the story's going to suffer, but it's you don't need to rely on the R rating for the story. I think where the R rating is going to come from for this is going to be those fatalities. So I wouldn't be so worried about it right now because if it, they could go about it like you're worried about, like, okay, we're going to go R, so this is what's going to happen. I think you can mm-hmm. focus on the story and then worry about the blood and gut stuff later. That's how I would go uh, about it. Okay, so my issue... Mm -hmm. that goes down to the core of this is that the video game yes blood gore was shown to congress and Mm -hmm. so was twisted sister albums were shown to congress because (laughs) congress is (laughs) dumb but and and anyway um so my issue is that for the the storyline of mortal kombat is simple there is a battle that's fought between mortals and immortals because they want to come over to our realm and control it that's Mm -hmm. it that's what Mortal Kombat's for. It gets fought every hundred or five hundred years, and you know we win. And that's that's the storyline. You you stick to that formula. It's basically you know uh, like a watered down kung fu, you know like a kung fu movie. And when you're trying to take something that simple and write a story for it, yeah, it can be kind of troublesome. You can get yourself into you know being repetitive, and people say, oh no, I've seen this before. And mm-hmm. it's great that they want to like emulate stuff from the video game. But later in that article, they were saying how, you know, when it came to the graphics and the storyline, they were trying not to, they were trying to make sure that that was, that they weren't going to uh, put their toes into the NC 17 rating, mm-hmm. which would kill the film. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it's one of those things where you have a movie that I hold in high regard that, came out to basically to me is the gold standard of video game movies and then you're going to recreate it and you're going about it this way it makes me mad it i get the same feeling whenever people talk about the day the earth stood still and the remake with keanu reeves i like keanu reeves but i really want the remake to every single copy to be burned into a (laughs) volcano be thrown into a volcano so it, 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 it 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 I don't like the fact that the way that they put this in the article and the quotes that they had it made it seem like the creators are like, no, we want the R. We need to make this for the R rating. And that's not that. I just, I, I see this going about the same uh, way of Deadpool. It's going to look cool. Again, mm-hmm. I would, I would stress I mean, that I think, oh, that, 
I think mm-hmm. that's more of a visual thing because they don't if they don't want that NC seventeen there there is a line that they cannot cross. Yeah. If, so they need to know what they need to know what's going into this movie to get that R rated the R rating. So well, I, Ryan, I, did you see the trailer? Yes. What did you think of the trailer? Because I watched it just before the pod, just before we started recording. Like, like I said, cool visuals. Yeah. But at the same, it's just it, it's. So did Hellboy. Hellboy looked cool in the visuals. Here's the thing: I think the trailer did right because I'm I'm kind of with you. I liked the first Mortal Kombat movie, and I even liked the second one, uh, just for pu- purely like fun camp reasons, like mm-hmm. you know, big claymation dragon meat. Yeah. Um, I. <laughs> I think this did something that those two movies didn't do is that they focused on spectacle and this movie, at least the trailer that I saw seems like it's focusing on character and it's going to like hold up these characters that people who are fans of the video game found cool and say, here's why we find them cool visually in a movie. Each of the lands that the trailer shows looks very distinctive. You can tell that this character definitely came from this land. And that's what I, I think that's what I want in a mortal Kombat movie even though, what, 10 minutes ago I said I didn't want more video game movies. Yeah. Yeah, no, and yeah, no, I completely agree. It's just I'm I'm afraid they're going to do the same thing that Hellboy did where mm-hmm. the Hellboy opens up and automatically they're throwing words at you that automatically make the movie an R rating when right. they don't need to be. And it's just like, oh my God, this was all forced to get the R rating. I'm done with this. It's like, this is what I got instead of the actual third Hellboy movie we were supposed to get. And this is what mm. I get. And so that's why whenever stuff like this, that's similar to what happened to Hellboy, I see with other movies that I'm interested in happen. I automatically get like, my fuse goes from being 10 feet long to none. And I just boom. <laughs> all right so i think that does it for the news aspect of today's show so let's talk about things that we're looking forward to for next month we've spent a lot of time talking about january and things that have happened this mm-hmm. month let's look look into the future um for me i'm looking forward to superman and lois on the cw i wasn't really looking forward to this show at all this is a spinoff from the Arrowverse, so Superman from that show is getting his own show with Lois Lane. They set this up at the end of Crisis on Infinite Earths last year. Right. Um, and in this show, Superman and Lois Lane have two teenage boys. Um, and in the trailer, it looks like they just figure out that their dad is Superman. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a weird weird w- way to take this story, but I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. The style of this show doesn't fit anything else from the CW shows. Um, it looks like it's a higher budget. I don't know if it's just because of the pilot, but you guys know this about me. I love Smallville, and this gives yeah. me a lot of Smallville vibes, so I'm really looking forward to this show now. I'm also looking forward to the other CW shows coming out, coming back. Uh, Flash kind of ended with a dud last year, like mid mid episode. They had to shut down production, so their season just ended abruptly. Um, so I'm excited for the that show to come back and everything else. But I'm really looking forward to this new show. Have you guys seen anything for Superman and Lois? I haven't seen a trailer for it though, but I, I have like heard talk about it, and I heard you talk about it too, and I've seen a little bit of it. And like, I don't know, I. <laughs> I think this is a hard sell for me. Like, okay. I, I want to know. I want to know. I think where the drama is going to come from because is it just going to be my dad is Superman and like that's the whole show? I don't know. Like, I don't know what the actual story of the story. I think it's going to be about Superman raising kids who I'm guessing have powers too. Like, I don't know if you re- we retread all that ground from Smallville or not. But Mm -hmm. there's 10 years of a show about a teenager growing up with powers. So I don't think it's that. I don't know what this show is going to be. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm intrigued by it. So when does this come out? I believe I didn't write down the date. Um, Mm -hmm. Late February. So like February 24th, I want to say. Okay. So it's pretty soon then. Yeah. So Ryan, how about you? Anything? <clears throat> well, it's already has a it already has a plus in my book if it doesn't look like a normal CW show. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Which we've gone on length about that in the past. Yes, so we have. There's that. 
Um, when you said that it's like his kids and he's raising them, all I can think about is Homelander. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'd be I okay with that. that. But I mean, you know what? This is where I like DC when they do something that's odd to me, or at least that I think is odd. And this, like, Superman raising kids to me is just odd enough to get my attention to have me watch a few episodes yeah. to see what it's about. Um, because, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the normal DC superhero storylines. I like all of the odd stuff, you know, all of the mm -hmm. weird offshoots and things that they do. Um, and this is, to me, by the sound of it, fits that category. So my my, my, my interest is there. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's premiering on February 23rd on the CW. All right. Devin's pick for the month of February is more Dr. Who. <laughs> Enjoy more Doctor that Who. I employment. I am. I also found something else that I think is super interesting. So first off, Dr. Who, I'm just going to walk my way through all of Dr. Who. I can't wait to watch it. I'm very curious about Jodie Whittaker because for those of you who aren't keeping up with Dr. Who, they finally made Dr. Who a woman, which I think is a great evolution for the TV show because I'm sick of them trying to iterate on your version of a boyfriend. Because stop it. Yeah. Um, so I now can't it's your wait to see of that. a girlfriend. Exactly. I mean, hopefully not, though. Hopefully they don't make it that yeah. weird. Um, but no, I think it's going to be really cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. But literally, like, seconds before this thing started, I saw that they're, um, they're going to release, I think it's on February 5th, uh, they're uh, releasing a show called Space Sweepers. I actually think it's a movie. It's uh, regarded as the first Korean space blockbuster. Uh, it's going to release on February 5th, and it's about a spaceship that's trying to escape the destruction of Earth. And I am so intrigued. Huh. Like, the Netflix banner for it that I saw, like, earlier today is what made me want to look it up. And it looks like there's going to be, like, a cool robot in it, which, like, I'm okay with. Like, I don't know anything about this, but, like, the premise and what I've seen of it so far looks good enough that I think I'm going to tune in. Cool. I, I really like Titan AE, and that sounds like Titan AE, so I'm going to get it. It sounds like Titan AE, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Ryan's pick is the film Supernova with uh, Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci, which is yep. not completely out of left field with everything we just talked about from Doctor exactly. Who and Superman. <laughs> uh, um, what, which... is, what is this film? Because I saw a trailer. I was like, I don't, I don't want to watch this right now, but I'm intrigued. Okay, so, one, thank you for saying the actors' names, because in my little bit before, I threw my phone, and I can't, I, I can't <laughs> get to it, so. I got you. My notes, I got you, my notes are, are there, so, um, but anyway, no, yeah, so, I saw a trailer, I've heard interviews with, uh, with Stanley Tucci on the radio yesterday talking about this, and I, I cannot wait. So, the premise of the movie is that you have a couple, Stanley Tucci and Colin Firth, um, play a long-term relationship couple and they're on a road trip in I think Ireland or the UK and they're seeing family and at first in the trailer everything seems normal and then you realize that one of the one of the two characters is suffering from early onset dementia oh. and the movie is about them growing as a couple dealing with the what they're going to be facing in the future I'm getting chills just thinking about it yeah. um it looks amazing. This movie is going to um, be tackling a topic that I think hasn't really been tackled directly in a film. Yeah. Um, there's also, and it, you, you, you've got you, you've got Colin Firth, you've got Stanley Tucci, really two good actors. They are playing a um, uh, a, a same sex couple, and from mm -hmm. the interview that I heard from Stanley Tucci yesterday, there is no mention of this in the film. It's just them as a couple. So oh, they don't wow. even make that's any, awesome. like they, 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 they don't make it a point to say that they're two guys. They're just there together. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a lot of lighthearted couple mo moments uh, mixed in with some comedy drama. Um, and it's just, I didn't like Stanley Tucci never really became a name that I could pull out of the back of my brain. Um, until I saw the episode where he was on Monk. <laughs> um, and then from there, I've been like, oh, that's right. This guy's been in a lot of stuff that I like. And then he's just been standing out since, you know, since then. And when it comes to Colin Firth with my wife being a fan of the, uh, 
oh, what's the name? Diaries. Bridget Jones. Bridget, Bridget, Bridget Jones, Jones Diaries. Jones movies. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the fact you've got both of these two actors that her and I both like, the premise of, you know, is of, uh, is of the storyline. I can't wait. It's going to be coming out on demand, um, I think, on the 16th of February. Um, oh, cool. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm if I'm if I'm going to be able to watch it, you know, next month or at some point. But it's definitely a movie that my wife and I are keeping an eye out to see, like as soon as we can rent it or get it on demand or somewhere. We're 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 definitely watching this. Yeah, it's definitely on my radar now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. It sounds awesome. That. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't wait. I, I like little small films wh- where you have super talented actors doing, like small intimate stories like this. Uh, I just watched yeah. the film made in Italy with Liam Neeson and his, um. his son. Uh, and it deals with like their real life trauma of his, what Liam Neeson's wife and his, his the, the mother dying and the relationship between the father and son dealing with that tragic death, uh, which is based on the real events of Liam Neeson's wife passing. Um, oh, wow. it's really good. Uh, it's a lot funnier than I expected. Cause, uh, I don't expect Liam Neeson to do comedy outside of life's two short bits. Um, <laughs> but it, it's really good. I think we're going to do it for the show here soon. But before that, cool. this coming Tuesday, we'll be live again, uh, on mm-hmm. Twitch talking about Ryan's pick for, for this week, which will be, uh, PS. I love you. If you're just tuning into the chat now, every week we make each other watch films that the other that one of us hasn't seen. Um, this is this whole thing's a new thing, but our normal show is is that we make each other watch movies mm-hmm. one of us hasn't seen for the for the first time. Uh, so Ryan's pick is P.S. I love you, starting our February Valentine's month. Uh, so that'll be Tuesday, but before then, tomorrow night, I think Devin and I are going to be back on Twitch playing some video games. Yeah, we are. Um, I think we're gonna be playing some Star Wars Battlefront and hunting down some hunting down some Ewoks and some other stuff. So <laughs> good. Make sure to follow us on Twitch to make sure you get the notification when we're live. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be posting there as well whenever we're about to go live. Um, this has been fun. What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Let us know in the chat what you guys thought of this new show format for us because I had fun. Yeah. Ryan, how about you? Yeah. I mean, I liked it. This is pretty much our conversations before and after we record and go live for, you know, our main show. So it's actually kind of fun, like doing it this way. Yeah. (laughs) And right now we're planning on doing this once a month. So tune in Mm -hmm. at the end of February for us to talk about things that we watched in February and whatever other news has come out since then. Um, But yeah. Until until then, uh, for you have to watch this podcast. No, I'm sorry. No, for we watch this. You watch <laughs> this. Um, I'm Alan. I'm Ryan. And I'm Devin. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time. Bye.